in our last episode, we were stranded, stuck in the mud for a day and a half and met some of the kindest people of our entire journey that helped us get out. After that, we went to a truck stop and we slept and we cleaned up the van and now we've drove two hours because we have some errands to do. Uh, first up was drop off the laundry, which we just did. Next is we need a new light bulb for our headlight. We have a running light out and we are headed to a couple of Mercedes mechanics to see if they can point us in the right direction to find that bulb. Then we need a grocery store. We also need a new strap and we need a cable or a chain or something that will forever live in this van for the next time we get stuck. Because whatever happened to our stuff, we don't know. It's not here. So we need that. That is all top priority and will be done before we settle into a campsite for the night. Right, Kurt? In theory. In theory. <laughs> we think this town has everything we need. I guess we'll find out. Spot number two, at least, is an actual business and exists. Let's see what Kurt finds in there. Okay. How's it going? We'll see. Oh, they may have it? Possibly. Nice. Any chance they got a cable in there? Is it that kind of store? No. no just parts? Yep. Alright. We got a bulb, and nah, a hat, a and a new hat, and yeah. maybe an air filter. And uh, I'm get, trying to get an air filter. They don't have the rims. Oh, well. But I'm checking on filters now. Nice, good stop, huh? And I got you got a new hat. <laughs> good stop, guys, woohoo. These guys helped me with all of getting all the stuff, so I got a headlight. We're looking at filters right now. They also showed us where a car wash is. You guys know we needed that because we're stuck. And we're looking for a tow cable. Thank you guys. And they gave me a new hat. Look at that guys. Thank you. All right, at the Mercedes truck parts store, we found a fuel filter, a new light bulb, a new air filter. They gave Kurt a cool hat and the only thing we didn't get there, well, they almost had our rim, which would have been epic, but it wasn't quite the right one. And we did not get an oil filter, but it was a very productive stop and it was awesome. Now they sent us up the road to a place that can get us a cable made. So a nice, strong, legit pull cable if we ever get stuck again. So Kurt is inside this store working on that. And then they also told us where to go get our car washed. They were extremely helpful at that last place. So cable, hopefully. Car wash, lunch, grocery store, pick up laundry. We are having a really good errand day. I probably shouldn't say that and jinx it. It's not very often they go this smooth. But let's go inside and see how Kurt's doing in here. So in our tire changing kit area that's under the feet of the passenger in the Mercedes Sprinter, there is a gigantic strong eye bolt that screws into these threads right here. And that is the pull point for a Mercedes Sprinter. So we've got that thing out and Kurt's seeing if they can rig up some sort of cable for us in here. Let's see how he's doing. Woo -hoo, that's awesome. Oh, how long is it? Plenty long? It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Meters. It's good. Perfect. Six, six meters. 
Six, Six. 18 feet. Six. A little over 18 feet, 20 feet. The next thing we need to find is if you see that red rope up there, it is our safety latch. Well, that's not the safety latch. We actually lost our cable, uh, our very strong cable that kind of is our safety latch to help secure everything with our tilting solar panels. Right now, Kurt has it tied down, but with the wind down here, we are on the lookout for something much stronger. They do not have that here, but we seem to be in the right town to find things. Kurt is not the only one having success. I was able to go into a professional cleaning supply store and get this window washer, which isn't that big of a deal and we can get this little part anywhere, but it is one that is threaded. So I was able to buy a longer handle for it but we always struggle washing the middle of the windshield. Man, we are crossing all kinds of things off the list today. There it is. We got a linga. A toe strap. Toe strap, six meters, which is about 18 feet. 20 feet, yeah. Two hooks, gachos, ganchos, ganchos. And so this was 16,000 pesos. So I think a little bit more than $55. And they're closing the door because guess what? <laughs> it's lunchtime. It's lunchtime and we're not going to be able to get any more chores done for a while. Maybe the car wash. Maybe, probably We're not. close we'll enough. Be, we can go we'll see. We'll go check and then we'll get some lunch. Let's do it. They did not, y'all don't know this because I didn't take you with us, but I walked to this plant store right here trying to find a little pot of grass for G Money because grass does not seem to grow down here and they did not have any. We were unable to find the car wash, but that's okay, because next up is lunch and I'm hungry. Hungry! Going to get some food. The happiness continues. I found Tidy Cat. Woohoo! Good cat litter is always a good find and the kitties. They got new toys. G sleeping, so he doesn't know yet. But these are more for Vanna. She likes feathers. Get them, Nina. Get them. All right, I know Snow's been keeping you up to date. We're headed to the big grocery store. But to be honest with you, I like these little carnicerias, these little butchers, because they'll kind of cut your chicken up. And I also feel like the meat is a little fresher. And right next to it, we have a, oh, a nice vegetable stand. You might even need to go to the grocery store. Look at this, guys. Wow. Hola. Next up is something to eat. Finding a restaurant that's open in this town has been difficult. But we did find a row of food trucks. Kurt will easily be able to find something and maybe I can find a chicken sandwich and take the bread off. Let's go see. One thing we did not share with you is that in the last video when we were stuck, Kurt worked nonstop. I, if you've seen the video, you know, for two days, digging our van out of the mud like he was a 21 year old and just slap wore himself out. Do you have any muscles that do not hurt right now? Everything hurts. My bones, my joints, everything. And we've been running chores all day. And unfortunately, by the time we finished is sort of the nap time for all of Argentina. So the only thing we could find open was these food trucks with all fried food. I think Snow did good and got some tacos. But I went to my weakness for the seafood platter. And yes, guys, it's fried. And I know it's not good for me. But, it's but look be at delicious. that. You got little shrimpies. Look, ah. Oh. It's mm. a smile we needed to see on Kurt's face. He's hurting today, mm. y'all. He's hurting. This makes him happy. Happy, happy, happy. And we're waiting on my tacos. My chicken tacos with no queso. <laughs> All right, Snow got some chicken tacos. She's digging in. They're pretty tasty. I think we're both pretty happy. She got shredded chicken with a little onion and carrot, some other stuff. Mm -hmm. This may be our most productive day ever. 
because the only thing we have left to do is pick up laundry. We have 50 minutes until it will be ready. We have parked under a shade tree while we wait on that. And then our camp is like five minutes outside of town. It has been a good, good day. Hopefully it continues. We've been having a pretty successful day today. Let's hope the laundry is ready. He said 4.30, they close at five. Hola. All right, the laundry pickup went very well. Hugo gave me a pointer on a place to go. I think it's already on our map, but he said it's really a must not miss. So we always appreciate advice from locals. Yes, always good news. And that campground. muddy jacket and what? laundry, he pulled it out. It came clean. Squeaky clean. So they did a phenomenal job. So nice. I have to recommend them. Good morning. We're having our breakfast and coffee. And the kitties are having some amazing bird time. We have a long drive day scheduled because we need to get to the next big city, which is right on the border of Chile, because it is time to take these guys for their annual vaccines and get their pet paperwork updated so we have no problems crossing the border. We have to do the long drive day because I don't know if we told y'all, but we are up against the clock on our time we are allowed to stay in Argentina. I did not plan on having a heart attack and being in Buenos Aires for three months. And it is thrown off the schedule and getting stuck on the side of their road for two days took away our buffer time that I had built in. So we have to make up some time today so we do not run out of our visa time. I think we're okay, but we can't have anything else go wrong. Or then we'll have to do a really crazy straight drive through or something. But we're going to finish our coffee, hit the road. We're taking y'all with us. Let's go. What are you doing, Snow? Oh, be up the van, then we get dressed, and we hit the road. But I gotta do the dishes. So in a van, you have a switch that turns your water pump on and off. Because you never know if you're gonna hit something and a pipe comes loose underneath. And if that water pump is on all the time and that happened, you'd lose all your water. So anytime you want to use your sink, you got to flip a pump on. Also, you have to really learn to conserve water when you're washing the dishes. So living in a van helps to save the planet. Not as much water use. Our Max Air fans have both malfunctioned. I mean, probably within less than a year, I think they've both crapped out on us. So we have to get new ones. I wish I didn't have to get Max Air fans, but I don't know what's better out there. But they're kind of cheap plasticky, and there's several functions that have broken on them. So in any event, we've got these, we've fashioned these little cushions with matching fabric to match the couch and the rest of the van because we have to keep them open all the time because they don't open and shut so it also helps muffle the sound even a little bit better than the original design of the fan so it's not a bad thing oh uh, yeah and there are also insulators as well so one final check before we roll out of here just a normal day in the life you got to make sure all the cabinets are secured Every one of our drawers has some kind of a hook on it. <laughs> There's the litter box. These all have magnets, so they stay pretty good. You need to make sure. Oh, it's a good thing I checked. You don't want things rolling around in here. <laughs> everything's a little different when everything's nice and tight and snug. When your house moves, right, Kurt? Yep. I think we are secured and ready to roll. It was a comfortable.
little campsite, nothing special, just a place to pull off on the side of the road out here in the middle of nowhere. They did have potable water and uh, we are tanks full, right Curdy? Showers full, drinking water tank is full. Now we gotta get the diesel tank full and our long day begins. And now we can see, which is good, because the Google says four hours and 51 minutes, 260 miles. Got a long day, so a full tank of diesel and clean windows was important. Ready to hit the road? Yeah, we washed these windows about five times to get all this mud off. They get I better each time. Finally getting it. Not not 100 percent, but they're 90 now. <laughs> Still looking for a car wash. One other thing we're looking for, we had a really good day yesterday, but we did not find our leveling blocks. We have these big chunks of like flat sided firewood type things. They're like three inches. We had three of them. And we picked them up in El Salvador, El Salvador at a wood mill for $5. And they have been the best leveling blocks ever, ever to help us sleep. I was sad. But we used them trying to get out of the mud, you know, kind of to try to get some traction and get us up. And they're just buried out there. So. Well, and when we got out, we were so excited. And the girls were up at the highway trying to get help. So, and we didn't have cell phone connects. And we had to take off to go get them. Anyway, long story short, it was a scramble out of there. And I left my beloved levelers behind. We're looking for something new. And until then... There might be some times we don't sleep level, but it's okay. The first year and a half of this journey, we didn't sleep level. So we'll live, but they were nice. Nice. We'll find more. It's like my new Mercedes hat. I wanted to back up a little bit. So we've been driving, we've been driving down to Ushuaia, down to Tierra del Fuego now for several days. We have about 800 miles. Now, once we got so far south, we ended up on Ruta 3. So we've spent a majority of our time on Ruta 3. That's the name of the road down there. And at various points, it kind of drifts away from the ocean. And there's little roads that go out to the ocean. And you can see the beaches. Most of them are cliffy beaches. And some of them have penguins, some of them have sea lions, some of them have elephant seals, guanacos, matas, rayas, jackrabbits. It is really cool, but with all this rain we've had for the last two or three days, as you guys have seen if you saw the last episode, the roads are a little mushy and a little sketch. We're running out of time to get out of the country. So we're moving out, 800 miles left. I think Snow already told you we have about 250 planned for today. So that's kind of what's going on. Most of the day we'll be on Ruta 3, southbound and down. Right now, Ruta 3 is taking us right along the coast. We're not in one of those areas that dips in. So there it is. They still got the pretty blue turquoise water out there and the beautiful waves crashing on the beaches. And a paved road. And a paved road. We have crossed into a new state. They call them provincias down here. So we are in the Provincia Santa Cruz. This morning when we left our camp, we were in, what was it, Chibot? Chibot. So, new state. We've just come through a construction site and they were asphalt paving which if you guys have been paying attention both snow and i come from a background to build the big roads coming into a little beachside city i do not know the name of it yet i'll try to figure that out but it obviously has a lot to do with the uh, fuel industry batteries big tanks for petroleum back there as we were driving along, we did pass a lot of pipes pumping stuff out of the ground and along the roads. So I don't know if this is a destination with all that storage back there. And then it gets shipped out from some sort of port. But the industry here is definitely heavy in the petroleum. 
All right, the Spanish word for wood is madera. So I came to a place here where they have wood to get the levelers for the van. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. They got exactly what we need. So I'm gonna head in here, pay up, and get the wood. All right, we have paid the bill. Now we gotta go back and see here. So it's about six bucks for the wood. So let's go back here and see if we can find the forklift operator to get the stuff. But look at all this wood back here. I think we got some of these right here. They'll have to cut them. So they also have some big saws here. Looks like they have a planer, different types of mill, mill work machinery. But you can get rough cut or finish cut, pretty much anything you need. Unfortunately, we're gonna get what we need right here. We could tell that last little town, the industry there was definitely based around the oil industry because of all the refinery areas and holding tanks and storage. But as we head south out the other end of the town, there are oil rigs scattered all out through these fields, even some over right along the beach. So, we're in oil territory. Nanner, are you being a bad girl? Are you scratching where you're not supposed to scratch? Yeah. Nanner. What are you doing? What are you doing, you goofy girl? Huh? <laughs> Our little mountain goat. We hit the jackpot for G Money. Now the van still got some clutter down there because we haven't put all our new stuff away yet. But I looked over on the side of the road and saw bright green tall grass. I had to grab our buddy some. Did you tell him about the scratchy pad? And look at this cool scratchy pad we got him. It's got balls in there. When we go around the curves, they roll around and jingle. That's pretty cool. Nader likes it. She's looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah. Got to keep our little kitties happy. There she goes. Did the balls roll, huh? Did you get a banana? Not yet. All right, break time to change drivers and get a banana, and the road trip continues. On down the road. So I don't know if it's going to come through on the dash cam or on this cam, but out there on the horizon, how would you describe that? There's a haze. It looks like a mirage. It looks like we're about to drive up onto lakes and the ocean, but we're not. Yeah, it kind of looks hazy or something like there's a line between the top of the hills and the horizon. Like the, you see, Anyway, that's not the point. The point is my left ankle through all that is improving somewhat, believe it or not but my right Achilles heel, it feels like it's pinching. It really is like, like somebody's squeezing my Achilles tendon and I can actually feel it moving in there like creaking like an old rusty door. So I've gone from a bum left wheel to a bum right wheel. I've got it iced, need to get this fixed guys. Got some big hikes coming up, meanwhile, Snow's gripping the wheel in this wind. It's windy. And we're stuck behind a semi, but it's difficult to pass with this wind. So we may just have to settle in and go slow. We'll see. All right. We're not gonna, we're not gonna slow down to video the, these, but you've seen them before, the guanacos. They are all up and down through here. We're seeing them in groups of 10 to 15. Uh, eight, seven, twelve, all different size groups through here, but a lot of them, and uh, they're actually really, really pretty cool every time we see them, so we never get tired of it. It's like the moon here, there's almost nothing growing, just a little teeny tiny grass. We just stopped for our lunch break. Kurt cooked up some baked chicken and baked 
butternut squash and there are zero leftovers because it was so yummy but we are driving through Kurt has already told you a little bit but we are driving through what I am now officially naming Wanako Alley because they are everywhere we have about two hours left to go till we get to our target spot we'll see if we make it that far or go a little farther but that was our goal this morning and that's where we're still headed Driving on these roads with the soft gravel on the shoulders and the wind gusts whipping through here and the ruts in the road. Every once in a while they'll just be driving along and the road becomes so rutted. Not necessarily potholed, just really big ruts. That truck's a warning. You can get pulled off the road pretty quick through here. Hope everyone was okay. Well, especially when the wind from the oncoming big giant trucks hit you too. It, it only yeah. caused the problem. Yeah. It's a dangerous stretch of road. And to be honest with you guys, it's a, a five hour drive day on a stretch of road that is mentally tiring because you are always watching the ruts and the wind and the other cars. And the Pretty tough. And the Guanacos, because this is Guanaco Alley. We have had five and a half hours of non-stop stressful driving through Guanaco Alley, which at the end quickly turned into the Rea and Guanaco Alley <laughs> because the Reyes were everywhere and they looked like they were about teenager age, still a little fluffy, but definitely growing up, leaving their parents and hanging out right beside the road. <laughs> but we've made it to this great little town, Puerto San Julian, I think that has a nice little campsite. We are settled in. The door is open. The ocean is right on the other side of that. This is a town where they have a replica of the Magellan ship, which is kind of cool. But if we decide to show you that, it will be in the next episode because this is where we're going to leave you guys. We will see you in a few days. Cheers, Cheers. guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!